All right. <clears throat> Did I finish all of that? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello, everybody. How are you doing? Thanks for coming to hang out. We are finally going to go back to this piece. Um, this edge here. As you can see, some of these dots have some gold dots in between, and some do not. So, the very last thing that I need to do on this piece before, you know, just little tiny touch-ups and varnishing, I have to finish these gold dots. So I figured that that would be a nice project to do um, tonight and hang out. And I'll show you a couple other things that I've been working on and we can chit chat and hang out and just enjoy each other's company for a bit. Hey, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Hi, Patty. It's so good to see you. How are your patients? And how is your patience? <laughs> how are you doing? I know, do you like the rainbow? <coughs> it's so funny. I did, um, I started a mug today, um, and I did the neon rainbow on it again. I hadn't done a wraparound design in quite some time, um, but keep an eye on my shop over the next week or so. I am going to be opening up custom orders again. Um, I don't know yet what color schemes I'm going to be offering. My thought is, um, unfortunately, I, this is the only one of these mugs that I had, um, but going back to some of the other mugs... Um, I'm thinking I'm going to offer one particular color scheme and a few different mug size options and then um, create some custom orders just with that one color scheme. So um, it's been a long time since I've had custom orders open and I'm a little freaked out about doing it again, but um, keep your eyes peeled because I will be releasing some soon. So this one I'm really, really happy with. It was a really fun to go back to the wraparound design. I haven't done a wraparound design in a very, very long time. And um, it's really inspired a lot of ideas. So I'm really excited to kind of get back to some of those. Um, this is a terracotta plate. For those of you who have been following along for a while, I've been working on this for quite some time. Um, I've got a couple big projects going on that are all eventually going to be auctioned. Uh, so that's what we're working on now. Hey, Axel, how you doing? Hi, Emily. Patients are doing well, but my patience is wearing thin. But you're okay? Okay, that's good. Being okay. That's something. That is, and that's that's a big deal when you've got everything on your plate like you've got, Patty. I'm sending you lots and lots of love. Hey, Jennifer. I used your mug holder today to paint my first wraparound design in a while with the mug holder. So my friend Jennifer, hey, got any guapes who just signed on here? made me this mug holder so when i paint my mugs this sits here it's incredibly stable and so what i was able to do was to put this on here and paint all the way around and and finish this it was it was the easiest wrap around mug design i've ever done and it was so much fun so um, she's got them available on her Etsy shop, I believe. So if you are a mug painter, these this is this, 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 <laughs> changed my life, completely changed my life. I find that I'm still holding my hand as if like I'm because I'm not relaxed into it yet. Um, but I think that'll just take some time. Let me scroll back. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you like it. Is it Sascheggy? I hope I'm saying that correctly. Please let me know if I didn't. Hi, Noreen. How you doing? It has been a long time. How you been? Oh, my God, Jennifer. I friggin' love it. I friggin' love it. Doing uh, how to, but, Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Axel. I'm so sorry, love. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. I really wish I had more of those pale blue mugs. 
Um, this came out of the vault. But what I do have is a bunch of different white and black mug options. And this color scheme looks really nice on black and on white. So um, I'm going to, maybe this will be the first color scheme for uh, the custom orders that I release. So um, yeah, give me a couple of days to kind of work out the bugs on how I'm going to do that. But um, I'll open up some slots for some custom mugs, maybe in that color. That color scheme, Sasha, okay, oh, wonderful. Working out the kinks on the patterns. Oh, cool. Yay. Freaking amazing, Jennifer. Okay. Sasha. That's so cool. That's a beautiful name. Beautiful way to spell. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad that you like my stuff. Thank you so much. I, um, I'm having a lot of fun lately. These terracotta plates have been super, super fun. I did a box lately going to this mug that's been just been different than what I've been working on lately. Um, and I kind of cleaned up a bunch of my inventory and I got a clear look at some of the things that I have to still paint on. And it's got me really inspired and full of ideas. So, um, there's, uh, we're going to have some fun over the next little bit. Um, I am still going to be working on creating patterns. My goal is to create two patterns a month. So this mug, actually, for anybody who does paint dot mandalas, I am going to be creating a step-by-step -step downloadable pattern for this mug as well. So I've got, I've been writing down all of the tool sizes, everything. And what I have decided to do is... From now on, everything I paint is going to have an associated pattern. Either I'll be reusing a pattern that I've done before, or I'll, I'll be writing it up brand new. Unless it's a mod slight modification, right? Um, this is the latest pattern, if you haven't seen it yet. So step-by-step -step pattern on painting this design. It's called Phoenix. I first did it on an incense holder, and I'm obsessed with it. You're going to be seeing a lot of this one. So... Um, be prepared to start really getting irritated by going, oh God, she's painting another Phoenix one again. Because I have so many different color ideas that I want to try. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so this one, I love this one. I can't wait. I'm going to resin this. And this is just going to pop so wonderfully. This one and the rainbow plate and the box are going to be getting auctioned off whenever I can get my lazy ass in gear and get them done. Now, I do want to give Noreen an update on the box, though. Oh, he's so sweet. Oh, and you just asked about it, too. <laughs> Great minds, Noreen. Fee's messing up. What's happening? Oh, no. Are you getting any delays or something like that, Doris? Um, oh, I'm so glad you like them. Oh, yeah, no, have at it. So the box is almost completely done. So the reason I say that is, so this is the back. I have it varnished. I finished all the gold detail. I painted the inside. I need to varnish the inside, and then I can put the hardware on, and then I'm going to go and buy... Um, some black satin to create some inserts for here. Doris is having some delays breaking up occasionally. Okay, is anybody else having a lot of delays? Are we doing all right? I can't wait to see what you create, Jennifer. That'll be so good. So my goal is to get little inserts that I can put in here so it has a satin interior and then this is gonna go up for auction. This and the two terracotta plates. So um, the issue right now is getting out to the fabric store. It's been a little difficult to leave uh, for too long the last little while. So once I can get out and do a few more things, um, I'm going to make it over there to get that satin so I can get this done. And I should be able to do that maybe even one day next week. So we'll see how things go there. 
and then yeah so we're gonna when these when this is done um, I am going to eventually coat it with resin on the inside um, and then I will varnish the outside and then it'll hopefully find a lovely home on someone's coffee table or entryway table that's what I'm hoping anyway It looks good, eh, Noreen? Do you like it? I'm so excited about it. I'm really, really thrilled with it. I think it's, once it gets the satin on the inside and the hardware back on, I think it's just going to be, ah, oh, I think I'm going to be absolutely giddy looking at it. <laughs> Parts repeated on the feed and then jumped ahead. Okay, that's weird. Mama Carrie, you're good. Seems okay now, Doris? Okay, good, good, good. Just a bit of freezing, nothing major. You were, but it seems okay now. A couple of delays, it seems fine now. Yes, okay, good. Um, do, I do, make a, do I make a living doing this? I sure try. Yes, I do. <laughs> this is my full-time job. Can I use the U, the UV resin? Unfortunately not, unless I got a large enough light. Uh, because the light is too small, I'd have to go over it like an inch at a time. How's it going, cat? So yeah, Miss uh, Miss Three Sixty Five. Um, yeah, this is my full time job. I'm giving it a go to try and <laughs> make a living out of this. And I want to thank everybody who purchased my recent pattern. Um, I had the best day that I have ever had for a number of orders uh, yesterday. So, and I'm so far um, on track to tie the best week that I've ever had. So thank you so, so much, you guys. Um, and if you want to learn how to paint these mandalas, I've got five different patterns on my website. Um, and I also have um, some YouTube channels to uh, teach the basics as well. So if you want to learn how to do it, got lots of options there. But I also try to go live a lot. I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have. And um, yeah, I love coming on here live and being able to hang out with you guys. This is my favorite spot. You're a good cat, that's wonderful. Hi, girl dragon blood, how you doing? Hello, Jess, how you doing? Cat's designing her first crochet dress. That's so cool. And thank you. It was really exciting. Oh, um, Miss 365, that's so sweet. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lady Rose. So um, I'm working on the edging for this terracotta plate. The last step that I have to finish is that I've put all of these dots around the outside edge. And you see how some of them have a small gold dot in between. Uh, and some of them do not yet. So we are going to work on these ones that do not and try to fill that in. And then um, this will be done and hopefully we'll be able to resin. Now, um, back to Doris's question about using the UV resin. I'm not using UV resin because the light is very, very small. However, I'm not sure if I'm going to use art resin or not. Um, I usually, I've been using art resin brand on my tables and... Um, I did a couple other things with resin, not too, too much though, um, with the art resin couple. I want to start doing some canvases and stuff like that, but, um, I'm not sure how durable it would be for a container like this, right? Like thinking a coffee table decor or heaven forbid, if it was on someone's hall table and they threw their keys in. I don't know how durable art resin would be to that. I don't know that there's any resin that I could use that would be really, really durable to that, but I want to have a look and see what I can find out. See what I can figure out anyway. Finally back to painting. Wonderful. You're great. You're actually doing a dotting project right now. That's so cool. And thank you, Lady Rose. Oh, hey, it's April. Oh, thank you. That's so kind. Hi, Jan. How you doing? All right. So um, this before Jennifer made me my really, really nice mug holder for painting mugs. 
this one that I showed you guys earlier. So she made this for me. So you just put the mug on and it spins. Um, before I had that mug holder, this was the makeshift one that I had done where I would actually put a mug in like that. Not this one because I never did the wraparound designs with this one. Uh, just in an attempt to help me um, alleviate some pain on some my wrist from holding the mug at really weird angles and everything. And um, so I haven't used this since because the mug uh, holder that Jennifer made is so far superior and it works so wonderfully. Um, but now this makes a really good prop to prop this up while I am working on where, wherever the start is for the detail on this edging. Right, it is for sure. I would think resin would be hard enough, I guess, say, as long as it cures hard enough, it should. I'm gonna have to play around with it. I'm gonna try it, right? Um, now I was talking to Erin Ridley and on her bowls and plates and stuff like that, uh, she uses extreme resin and says that it's, um, it's good for that stuff. So I'm going to look at it just to see what the difference is as far as, you know, how they explain their durability and quality and all of that sort of stuff and, um, decide from there. But, um, I'm kind of hoping that uh, maybe Art Resin will come out with a UV resin and all of that too. Because I really liked them. I liked working with them a lot. Um, this is approximately 9 inches wide, Jennifer. This gold that I'm using, it looks incredibly dull in the container. It is spun gold. It is the Crafters Acrylics by Deco Art that I get at Dollarama here in Canada. It is my favorite gold of all time because it has this wonderful, this is the same gold. See how it catches the light so wonderfully? Like, watch this on the box. This is the gold I used on the box, right? It looks really, really dull, but let me get it up into the light here. Oh. Uh, no, it's not working. The varnish screwed it over. So I'm going to have to dot over and, and fix that. Oh, there we go. Kind of see how it goes kind of nice bright yellow when the light hits it? It reflects really, really nice. Had she tried Art Resin or just tried the Extreme? She's done both. Erin Ridley has done both. Um, and she said that she uses her Art Resin. Now that might just be because of cost, right? Um, to use your art resin um, when you don't need to use as high volume maybe to go through it. Um, but anyways, this gold is my favorite one. So always test your paints because even ones that look like they're not super fantastic in the bottle, um, you never know if you're going to fall in love with them. Now, I'm going to... All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to hold you guys up here for a second. And I'm going to I'm actually just going to put this down like that and we're going to dot right in here. So I'm going to try and zoom in. Now while I'm painting like this, I'm not going to be able to see the screen. So I'm, I won't be able to see any of your comments or questions. Um, so please know that I'm not ignoring you. I will take regular breaks and come back to the comments and, and answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, so please know that if it takes me a few minutes to, to answer your question or uh, come back to the comments, uh, I'm not ignoring you, I promise. I just can't see the screen on my phone from this angle because you guys are up above my head. The tool I'm using is what we have been calling a micro dotter. It's a clay sculpture tool from Amazon. Got a really sharp point on it. Um, there's lots of different things that you can use to get really tiny, tiny dots. I really enjoy this tool. I, I find it's 
really easy to use and it's and it works well for me but it doesn't for everybody <clears throat> um, so there's lots of different options a really sharp pencil um, a really sharp toothpick um, the end of a mechanical pencil for really tiny dots the end of a nail of a screw any of those kinds of things as long as it's sharp then it could work for really tiny dots like this. So creating the rings of color were really, really relaxing and I found them very therapeutic. Um, some people may call it tedious it's not for everybody for sure but I find that it's incredibly relaxing this would be the kind of project where I would just sit and turn on some music and let my mind quiet this slows my mind slows the f crazy cycle of thoughts in my head. This slows my breathing. It's very meditative. So the thing to always remember with learning dot mandalas or anything new is try and really stay in touch with why you're doing it. I lose touch with it more often than I would like. And the reason that I'm doing it is because I enjoy it, right? Because it's fun. Because I have ideas and I want to try different things and I want to experiment and I want to play around with all these different fun supplies. But sometimes I, especially if you are comparing yourself to other people, if you are um, starting a business with whatever it is that you're passionate about, it can be really difficult to remember that the reason that you're doing it is because you're passionate about it and because you enjoy it and because it actually helps you alleviate stress, right? So the more often that you can remind yourself why you're doing this, the better. And if you're just learning, you don't need to be good, quote unquote, at it at the beginning. What you're looking for is is it fun? Do you want to try again? Right? If you can let go of the outcome and just say, I, I know I can learn this. I'm not going to learn anything brand new completely in one day. So let's see what I can learn today. And if it was fun to learn that, then maybe I'll try to learn something else and just keep following the joy. You are not tied into it forever. You don't have to spend a ton of money on tools. You don't need fancy tools. You can get fancy tools if you want them because they're fun, but you don't need them. I started with uh, crochet hooks, anything round with a round flat edge. Oops. Anything with a round flat edge will work. Um, I also have a set of tools that has these little metal balls on the end. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me see if I can put this down. So see how there's a little metal ball on the end? I have ones of different sizes. Right? They help an awful lot. They're, they're probably my other necessity. If you were going to buy a set of tools, I would buy a set like that first before I bought a set like... Um, the ones that look like the pencils with the flat ends. Um, I literally went to Walmart and bought all the gray plastic crochet hooks in a bunch of different sizes and, and used those for almost the first year. So don't feel like you have to spend a ton of money to get started. Follow the fun. Remember that you're doing it because it's fun. Try to take away any pressure of any other reason as best as you can because if you're letting yourself doing do something because it's fun 
you're more likely to want to do it again. And if you want to do it again, you don't have to create patience. You don't have to manufacture patience. You don't have to manufacture motivation, right? When it's something you love and you are nice and in touch with why you are doing it and because it's something you love, you practice a lot more than if it was something that you really couldn't care less about. The more you practice, the faster you get comfortable, the faster your skills develop. And if it looks fun to you, do it. Just try it. Just try it. All right, I'm going to do a few more of these here. I'm going to get this to be even. And then I'm going to put this down, give my hand a bit of a break. And I will come back to the comments and catch up with anything that I've missed. So in a couple minutes, I'll come back to the comments. It is gonna feel so good to get this project finished. I feel like I've been focusing an awful lot on follow through and actually completing things lately. And it's been feeling really, really good. <laughs> I'm waiting for the burnout though, because I feel like it's been taking an awful lot of brain maintenance to do it, but it's working. Like everything that I've wanted to accomplish because of this, it's working, it's happening, right? So we'll see how it goes. It was so fun to realize that yesterday was uh, the most number of orders I've ever had in a, in, a, in a single day. I had 11 orders yesterday. It was so freaking fun. And they weren't, and I released the pattern yesterday and they weren't even all for the pattern. It was really a fun, fun day. So what I'm doing is working. It's just a matter of how how do I maintain it? Where's what's the sustainability, right? That's always the trick is what's actually sustainable. So we'll see how that goes. All right. I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to put this down, give my hands a little, little shake. I'm going to stretch my wrists a little bit and I'm going to close up my paint so it doesn't dry out on me. And then I'm going to pull this down here so I can come back and talk to you. All right, I'm scrolling back. Thank you, Uppy. Without the white dots, I can't focus. The dots help and compliment a lot. Oh, that, that's so wonderful. Thank you. What did I do? <laughs> you just, you shared the live. So I don't, I think that just posted it up to the For You page. So thank you for that. <laughs> nothing, nothing damaged. <laughs> Sorry, Jan. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Patty. Thanks, guys. Hi, Rhonda. Thank you. So I'm really pleased that this one's almost done. I still have guidelines to remove on this one, but we're getting there slowly but surely. And then I also want, I have to start thinking about what I'm going to do for this one, for the edging, because I've got to do something in the edge in here. And then I've got to do something on the outside. But I'm hoping that I can come up with something soon. Um, maybe that's something that I'll brainstorm for the lives this week. The goal will be finishing the gold trim on this one and then um, coming up with a plan for the inner and outer edges of this one. This one I'm a little stumped. So... I've got some ideas. I feel like I want to go back to these concentric circles on the inside here so that it doesn't compete with the swoops. Um, but we'll see. So that'll be coming up in the next ones. That's the most recent pattern as well. If you want to learn how to paint that design that I just had in my hand, um, there's a downloadable pattern 
on my website. There's a downloadable pattern for this one as well. There's, it's just a, a variation. This is a variation of the uh, sour candy pattern. Um, yeah, there's some fun ones there. <clears throat> Sorry, I just had to take a drink. So my goal is to do two patterns a month. Haven't gotten there yet, but we'll, we'll, we'll work on it. Hi, Sue. Oh, I'm so sorry, Sue. Sending you so, so much love. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that you're comfortable to come here. That makes me really happy. And we love you. And I'm glad you're here. Hi, Tracy. All right. So, we have the design. We have the swoops on the inner edge. And then we have these dots here that we are adding uh, gold dots to. I'll show you here in a second. I gotta just zoom out. So we are working on the edge of this. So we're adding those gold detail dots there. I feel like I need to come up here a bit more though and then zoom in. I think that's better. Okay, I'm gonna try and stay right here. I am gonna paint for just a couple of minutes. Um, and then what's gonna happen, if anybody is new to my lives, while I'm painting like this, I can't see the comments. So if you leave a comment or a question and I don't answer right away, please know I'm not ignoring you. Um, I just can't see them. So what I do is I sit and I pause every once in a while and I come back and check the comments uh, and catch up on anything that I've missed. So um, please know that I am not ignoring you if I don't answer your comment right away. Um, and like I said, I try to stop on a regular basis to go in and answer questions. So I just switched to going in a straight line like this because Going in the straight line up and down, um, I wasn't lining them up, lining the dots up as well. For some reason, it was affecting my alignment. Um, one thing that I've gotten used to is I don't question why that stuff happens. Like, why did my alignment not work when I did it this way? Um, I've really started going, I don't care why it didn't work. If it doesn't work, don't do it. <laughs> and I kind of just try to force myself to just find the way that it does work and find the way that it works and that is enjoyable and switch your your technique around as often as you need to there are no rules right there's common things that you see in these designs there are no rules you can do whatever you want so like when somebody asks me, and this is a heads up, you can always ask me ton, any questions that you have. But if you ask me, should I, can I put swoops next to this? My answer is always going to be, you can do whatever you want. Because you're the one that gets to decide if you like it or not. Right? So play around with stuff. Look at a bunch, if you're learning, follow a bunch of different artists. Watch how they do things. Pick up what works from each one of them and learn different techniques. Everybody's doing things the way that works well for them. And again, because there's no rules, there's no right or wrong way of doing things, right? There are perfect world scenarios, but play with it. As you get to fall in love with it, you'll figure out where you want to, you know, dig in and learn more, who you want to learn from. There's a lot of great artists out there teaching what they know. So there's lots of opportunity to learn from a bunch of different people and figure out what works best for you so so important I 
I still on camera? The longer I hold the tool there, the more paint flows down. Um, now what we've discovered with the micro dotter is though, is if somehow the tip of the tool dries off before the paint has flowed down to the tip, it will actually almost form a barrier so that the paint that is up here won't get down uh, and you'll just see that you're just removing paint off of the tip. And that's okay, it's just about noticing when that's happening um, because it does also mean, you know, make sure you're cleaning off your tools a lot. And especially for the tiny ones, make sure that they're as clean as you can possibly get them. So I, so that being said, mine is an absolute mess. So I'm going to just, I just take a wet cloth. So while I'm painting, I have um, a wet face cloth that I, um, I clean my tools off. This is how I clean my tools off while I'm painting. So I'll dip and dot, dip and dot, dip and dot, and every two or three, I will clean the paint off of the tool. Because as the paint starts to dry on the tool, um, it's going to eventually build up. And if you use a lot of multi-surface, eventually it's gonna cure there, right? So when you're using multi-surface especially, it's gonna cure. If it has an air curing ability, it's gonna cure there and it's not going anywhere. So, um, and then I kind of usually go over with my fingernail like this to scrape off the end to make sure it's all nice and clean. Oh, and I just stuck my hand in gold paint. That's fun. That's awesome. <laughs> yep, all right, that's fine. That's what pants are for. Wipe my hands on the pants. I'm gonna catch up on the comments for a second. <laughs> I'm just scrolling back. I hope it will come out on the other side soon. You will. You will. Um, we'll be here with you while you're going through whatever you're going through. Exactly, Patty. Thank you, Faith. Or wipe them off on your shirt. Yep, yep. Used to do that too. I'd, I'd wipe it off, wipe them off on my hand. <clears throat> I hadn't done this in a while. I started doing this again recently. I like having the paint on my hand. <laughs> I, I just feel like more of a, of a painter <laughs> when I have this paint all over my hands. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I've got multiple hoodies that have paint all over the wrist because <laughs> I was wiping my paint off on it. Yep. All right. Now, I, I got these for the bottom. I got these little stick-on um, clear feet thingies, but um, they're not sticking very well because they're very, very wide. So I'm actually going to go to the dollar store, and I'm going to um, – I've got – there's some kind of foam um, material ones that are nice and thick that should be able to level this out. So, again, this is the front inside edge. There's the center. Uh, for my paints, when I'm painting stuff like this, so when I'm painting um, canvas, wood, um, I use regular acrylics. Now on these terracotta plates, I did do a coat of black multi-surface and baked them because these ones came with kind of like a shiny finish on the inside edge. And when you have a non-porous surface, your paint isn't going to adhere and sanding didn't work. Um, so what I did is I did a base coat of the multi-surface acrylics. So multi-surface acrylic paints are acrylic paints that are designed to adhere and cure to a non-porous surface. So those are the paints that I would use for glass, for mugs, vases, um, all of that sort of stuff. So because this was a non-porous surface, I used the black as the base coat, once it was baked on and cured, and I knew that that base base coat wasn't going anywhere, then um, on 
I didn't on this one, <clears throat> but on this one, I, um, I put a coat of black gesso, which is a very matte background. This one, I varnished it because I thought it would make my life easier for when I have to, um, if I make a mistake and I want to pull a couple of dots off, I thought it would be easier if the background was already varnished. Um, and I didn't find it any easier. Now, it could just be because it was something new to me, but um, yeah. So this one has the multi-surface as the base coat, but then I also went back in and put the gesso on to have the matte finish. Um, if you are painting on canvas or if you have tried doing dot mandalas or dot painting on canvas and gotten frustrated, do yourself a huge favor when you can and invest in some gesso. Gesso is there to smooth the canvas so that you're not fighting against the fibers of the fabric anymore. So um, when you're doing a canvas, if it's not super smooth, then you will likely find that your dots are all misshapen um, because of the fibers in the fabric of the canvas. Um, this is the same if you don't sand your wood really well as well. Don't just use it right out of the package. Um, MDF is usually the only kind that you can, um, but if you're using some kind of raw wood or craft wood, make sure you sand the crap out of it if you can and coat it as well. If you're um, for base coating wood, I would highly recommend getting yourself some cheap crafters acrylics. Put a couple coats of that on the wood first because the wood's going to be very, very thirsty and soak up a lot of your gesso. So um, I wouldn't use your gesso on that sort of stuff. <clears throat> Let me scroll back here. Need to change your play clothes, Tracy. <laughs> Uh, change to your play clothes yep 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 um so i get my paint um mostly at michael's but i also will order it online um dollar stores any of those sorts of things the phoenix one is my new pattern and i'm so head over heels in love with that phoenix design like i can hardly even stand it I think it's probably the prettiest thing I've ever made in my entire life. I really do. I did up to this part in here, I did on an incense holder once and it looked gorgeous. And that's when I knew I needed to make it on a larger one. But with this extra row, I don't, I don't think I've ever done something that's quite this pretty, quite this striking. It takes my, I, I take my own breath away with this one. <laughs> I love it so much. So yeah, if you want to learn how to paint this one, I've got this design, a step-by-step -step downloadable pattern available on my website. Um, I have four other ones there as well. I think I have a total of five. I have a, yeah, I have five there now. Um, so if you want to learn how to paint um, these dot mandalas, then those step-by-step -step patterns will work. I also have a YouTube channel uh, with a bunch of free tutorials in a playlist um, that will teach you the techniques behind all of this. So. I love it. I get to do something that I love every day and I'm so friggin' lucky. And the fact that you guys um, enjoy coming and hanging out with me while I do it, just all the better. <clears throat> it's a wonderful little family we got going here. So to anybody who's new, welcome. Happy you're here. If you have any questions at all, um, please don't hesitate to ask. I don't assume to have all the answers, but I will do my absolute best to answer any that I can. Uh, BDP strong. So I don't know yet. So I don't know if these are going to be able to serve food because I don't yet know how I'm going to finish it. Um, so that's one thing that I am going to look into, though, is when I do a resin coating, am I able to use a resin that is food safe? I have to look into that because I don't know enough about the different types of resin to know which ones are. So I'm going to have to do some research on that. Um, so I'm honestly not sure at this point what's going to happen with that. Good question, though. <clears throat> I'm scrolling. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up. 
Oh, you fell asleep, Cindy. That's okay. You must have needed your rest. Oh, thank you, Faith. I love the I love the Phoenix one too. The Phoenix one, once it gets done, because I'm going to do a design on the inner edge for that one as well, and on the outer edge. I just don't know what I'm going to do yet. Uh, but that one, this one, and I did a box that I will show you quickly before we start painting again. I did this box, and these three are going to be auctioned. Not sure if I'm going to auction it on Instagram or Facebook yet, um, but I keep an eye on. Um, I'll post. I'll. I'll I'll post like crazy when I finally make a decision <laughs> about where these are going to go. Um, but yeah, I want to, that's going to be an interesting adventure, trying out an auction. So we'll see how it goes. But I'll keep you guys posted, for sure. And the pattern's a lot of fun. Just take your time. Hi, Jeannie. Thanks, Tracy. Oh, thank you for the roses, Terry. That's so sweet. Um, my website is mandalaloveaffair.com. Um, there is a link in my bio. Oh, Jan already answered that. That's lovely. Thanks, Jan. You placed an order earlier today for two of the mugs. Oh, that was you. Yay. Yeah, those are some fun experimental colors on a white mug to, to use that design. I'm going to have those in the mail. They'll be on their way to you, Jeannie, on Thursday morning. I'm so excited for you. They're too, they're, I'm, I'm in love with those ones, too. Thanks, Jan. Hi, Super Lion Storm. Also has a shop. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Amy, thank you so much for the love. That's so kind of you. The box is pretty amazing, eh? Yeah, I'm... <laughs> it's another one. I It was um, a modification of a design that I did on my very first large canvas. That canvas is still available on my website. Um, it took me a year and a half, almost two years, before I was willing to post it. <laughs> oh, teal is such a wonderful color, isn't it? I find it so relaxing. I'll be doing more in that color for sure. For sure. Okay, I'm going to raise you guys up again for a little bit, so I'm not going to be able to see the comments. I'm going to try and get you into position, and we're going to try and... Oops! get through some more of this edge. I need to be able to lean it back this way. So let's see if I'm dotting right here. What can you see? So we need you over here a bit more. All right, let's try. Uh, no, I'm going to. We know I'm going to end up pulling it closer to me. So let's see what we can do here. All right, so um, while I have the camera up like this, I'm not able to see the comments. Ooh, oh, that slipped. Oh, that was terrifying. Um, so I'm not able to see the comments. So uh, what I do is I pause on a regular basis to come back and just catch up on any comments that I've missed. And... Um, yeah, just catch up on anything I've missed. So if you do leave a comment or a question and I don't answer it right away, please, please, please know that I'm not ignoring you. It's just because I can't see the phone screen. And I will come back and I will literally go and scroll back to see everything that I've missed as best as I can. Every once in a while, TikTok has made that difficult, but most of the time I'm able to. So just know that it might take me a few minutes to answer your question, but I will answer it for sure. I also have a lot of friends that um, have been coming to these lives for quite some time and know a lot of my answers. So uh, if one of the other um, lovely friends in here answers your question before I do, uh, it's a 99.9% .9 chance that they already know the answer anyway. Because, um, yeah. So it's really, really cool. So you might get your question answered uh, by somebody else before I get to it either. So just know that you can trust that, that answer. Anybody who is comfortable enough to jump in and answer the question has been here a while. So, 
but please don't hesitate to answer or to ask any questions. I want to thank you guys again for sending me pictures of what you've created. I absolutely love seeing the stuff that you have painted. Um, so please keep sending me that stuff. I absolutely love it. Um, if you're looking for a lot of tough criticism, I'm not, I'm not your girl for that. I give you suggestions, but I'm always going to put it back to what do you like about it and what do you not like about it, right? So um, if it's coming to advice like is this good enough or anything like that, it's going to end up in a much deeper conversation than that. And I'm always going to say, yes, it's good enough. If you enjoyed it and you love it, yes, it's good enough. It's always good enough. I'm always going to try to encourage the fun in it before anything else and encourage you to get in touch with what you like about it and what you don't like about it and not worry about what other people may or may not like or not like about it. There's the potential for this to be a very expressive form of art, to express mood, to express experience, and to capture a lot of emotion and everything. Um, Doris has posted some beautiful paintings. Um, everybody's posted some beautiful paintings with some incredible inspiration stories. <clears throat> And that's part of the cathartic, meditative, therapeutic properties of this as well. It's very easy to sink in and have hours disappear. Those are the fun days in my mind. So I'm going to paint for another few minutes and then I'll pause again. I think we might actually get this done during the live tonight. We might get the whole thing done. How far are we? We have till here. So that's not bad. Oh, we have from there. Oops. So we only have from here, from here to here. So not even a, th just a little over a quarter. Not quite a third. Oh, I was off camera again. Shit. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> I'm going to try and do this again. Let me scroll back. Sorry. I can't see the screen. I can't. That's the hard part is once I've got you raised up. I can't even see your comments to see that I'm off the screen. Hi, Hunchy Puppy. Hi, Chris. How you doing? Thanks, Jan. Hi, Kim. Yes, I know. The hard part is, is, is again, if... I won't see those comments until I come until I stop anyway, right? <clears throat> Sorry about that. Oh shit. Okay, let's see. Your best day so far. That's lovely. I'm so glad. You had a good time? You had a good time at the shows? Thanks for sending me pictures. All right, let's try this again. Let's try this again. All right, I can't see the comments, so I will come back to it in a few minutes. 
and hopefully I will be able to stay on camera this time. It's the one time where it would be really nice if there was some sound or something, right? Like, it would be really cool if there was some kind of sound that you guys could, like, honk your horn at, like, hey! <laughs> and then I could move back. That would be so much more fun. <laughs> could be really irritating, though. I have a feeling there's a few of you that would have way too much fun with that. Yeah, never mind. Nobody, you don't get those buttons. I hope they never come up with those buttons. Never mind. Sorry I said anything. Didn't mean it. All right. I put my camera a little lower so I can at least kind of see the color flashing in there so I can tell. Hopefully a little bit better when I've gone off screen. Hopefully I don't do it again. Sorry, you guys. <clears throat> right there, okay. My eyes are getting tired, that's why I'm not getting these centered as well as I would like. I was saying to my mom earlier that I really, really, really like doing these 8 to 10 o'clock lives. I feel like there's a whole group of you guys that I never get to hang out with because I'm usually done my day so much earlier. So um, I'm thinking I'm going to start doing some some more later ones like maybe even a little bit later like a 10 to midnight or something like that one of these days I still have the idea in my head to do a marathon live and just go live for like eight hours and see what happens um, I also have the idea of living a nocturnal life for <clears throat> for a week and being up and on here like from midnight till 5 a.m. and stuff and just sit up and paint. I think what I like about that idea is that it ju I just know it's going to be quiet. <laughs> and the idea of the quiet of like 3 o'clock in the morning, that sounds really friggin' peaceful. <laughs> Now, when I'm up awake and I don't want to be, like, when the insomnia kicks in, that's a whole different story. But then there's other times where I'm like, damn, that'd be nice to be so quiet. <laughs> How are you guys finding the later lives? Is it a little bit more accommodating? Any of my people in Eastern time zone, are you finding that they're too late? I was saying that I felt like, so we talk to my dad every night um, at six o'clock ish. Five, ten after six around there um, my dad is in a long-term care facility <clears throat> and we talk to him every night at six o'clock and when I I for some reason was always doing my lives from like from seven till nine and I didn't realize how stress how much stress that was adding to my day simply because it meant that after that phone call, I had a rush to get ready for my live, which means, which meant I had to have a certain number of things done before that phone call, because I knew that after the phone call and like between the phone call and the live, I wouldn't have a lot of time. So I found that adding this extra hour has 
made a huge difference to have two hours between that now. I actually was able to tonight to sit down and slowly eat a meal <laughs> and still have plenty of time to actually prepare myself for the live. Now there's other things I could have been doing that I probably should have been doing, but you know, that's fine. Um, but I was able to get some extra stuff done, which felt really, really good. Oh, we're making so much progress here, guys. We only have from here, from here to here. Ah, we're going to get this done in this hour. <laughs> Yay. Okay, I'm going to take a pause for a quick second. Let's put this down. I'm going to put that one down. And I'll show you the mug that I worked on today. If you haven't seen the mug that I worked on today. All right, I'm just scrolling back. I'm going to catch up. All right, so thank you for everybody who, um, who um, asked questions. I apologize. It takes me some time to get back to the comments while I'm painting. I can't see my phone screen. Um, so this is a terracotta plate. You know the kind of the plates that you buy to put under your terracotta flower pots to catch the water? That's what this is. And I just painted it and then painted a mandala on it. I'm going to cover it in some resin and it'll be like a decorative plate to put it somewhere. I do. I just have to figure out whether I'm going to find something that's food safe or not. <laughs> I would get no peace, would I, Tracy? <laughs> it might mess me up, too. Yeah, it probably would scare the piss out of me, too, wouldn't it? I'd go off screen and then hank, and it would scare the snot out of me. I'd smudge paint all over the place. It would definitely need to be the awooga sound. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It totally would. It'd be fun. It was a voice like Mr. T. <laughs> it would be amazing. Or laughing little chipmunks. That would be awesome. Oh, my God. That'd be so funny. Yeah, I figure maybe try some later night ones, eh? To get some more West Coast. Your bedtime is usually 10, so it's cutting it to the wire, eh? Well, we'll stick with the 8 to 10 for a little while, and then you never know, one of these days, maybe I'll do, uh, I'll do some extra long ones. So if you want to stay on, you can. Maybe I'll do some, some late ones anyway. It could be kind of fun. could be cool. All right, but I'm glad that you guys are, are good with that so far. Um, so I want to show you this because I'm going to brainstorm a little bit here with you guys. Um, it's been a very long time since I've taken custom orders for mugs. Um, a friend reached out to me who, um, and it's a friend who has been so unbelievably supportive in this endeavor of mine over the last couple of years. Um, she she wanted a custom mug and I had the bandwidth to do it so I jumped in and started it's almost done um, haven't done a wraparound mug in a very long time but what I'm thinking is is that what what caused me to stop doing custom orders before was that I had a hard time getting motivated and inspired to work with colors that I didn't necessarily feel like working with on that particular day. So what I was kind of thinking of is what if I say, you know, if I give four different options for mugs, say like a, a the tall black mug, the tall white mug, then maybe like the short fat black mugs and the, the short skinny uh, white mugs or the short skinny black mugs and say, you can choose whatever kind of mug you want. You can choose whether you want the medallion, which I would consider to be the round design on the front or a wraparound design. And then this is the color scheme. So you'd basically be saying, I want one in this neon metallic rainbow on this kind of mug. And I want either a wraparound or a design, but you or one of the round mandalas, but you wouldn't necessarily know which one I would do. And I would just paint some custom pieces. And if you were ordered more than one, you'd have the option to get them all the same. 
So instead of just a total free for all on colors, that's kind of what I'm thinking is, you know, hey, this month I feel like painting a bunch of rainbow, neon rainbows. So um, there's some custom orders open for neon rainbow pieces. Or this month I feel like painting um, a bunch of regular rainbow pieces with some gold. So here's the color scheme for this month. And um, yeah, like build a mug. Oh my gosh, Tracy. Yes. The build a mug factory. Yes. These are the colors you have to choose from. These are the mugs you have to choose from. These are the designs you have to choose from. And off you go. And then like maybe say, you know, this month I want to paint a whole bunch of stuff in the Phoenix color. So this is my color scheme for this month. And these are the items that I will do custom orders for. Um, yeah, you like that one, Tracy? Excellent. Oh, thank you, Melinda. Yeah, Jennifer? Okay, cool. It sounded like a way that it felt like it could be more fun to do custom orders, right? Or, um, like, I painted a bunch of mugs in the elegance pattern, right? I'll show you the pattern. Hold on. So I painted a bunch of mugs in this pattern with a bunch of different colors. So maybe one month it's, I'm gonna paint this design and these are the 10 different colors that I'll paint it in on two different mugs. But to be able to kinda do it that way. Yeah, do you think I'm on some, onto something? Oh, yay, excellent, oh, yes, excellent, okay, cool. Um, a quick and total um, shameless plug, I have a literal shit ton of these different mugs available on my website. I've got the black mugs with emerald green, with blues, with reds, with hot pink. Um, I've got white mugs with white and silver or white and pinks and whites and pale purples, metallics. So if you like this design um, or need a gift for anybody and you like one of these mugs, again, absolute shit ton of them available on my website and I'm going to be adding more later um and this is the latest pattern so if you liked those colors and you want to learn how to paint this design um there is a step-by-step -step downloadable pattern available on my website as well all that stuff is in my bio okay that's enough of that that's enough of that shit uh, let's get back to painting one recommendation for the patterns, if you are not super familiar with um, dot mandala techniques, I do go over some of that stuff in the downloadable patterns, but please also know that I have a YouTube channel that has um, a playlist that is tutorials on a bunch of different techniques. So please know that you have that free resource available in my YouTube channel. All that stuff is linked in my bio. Um, so yeah, and let me know if you have any questions. If you have questions, please reach out and let me know. I don't have all the answers, but I want, I'd love to help if this is something that you want to try. And um, yeah, just lots of questions. I'd love to help. It's okay, Christine. We're here for another hour. We're good. Yay, I'm so glad you guys like it. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Thank you, Christine. Thanks, Patty. Hi, Lori. How you doing? Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Yay! Oh, that's so exciting. I'm so excited. Thank you. That's wonderful to hear, Lori. I'm so, so glad. Um, now, <laughs> I used to just do... Um, I used to do Facebook Live tutorials, and that's what these tutorials are, are the recordings of those Facebook Lives that we did, which I always really love the lives because not only does it end up being um, a conversation about technique, but we got into, and we still get into, a lot of really interesting, thoughtful, just very, in, some intense conversations <laughs> Um, and uh, fair warning that a lot of those lives, I, my therapy is coming to you guys. So there's, there's tears and, and struggles and the whole bit. Um, 
but you you're definitely going to get some some raw time with me and I want I always want to try and make it as much fun as possible oh, I'm so glad hi Barb can it be done on metal cups absolutely so if you are going to paint on something like um, metal glass or ceramic something that would be considered a non-porous surface so for example stone and wood is a porous surface glass metal ceramics would be non-porous when you're painting on a non-porous surface you want to use paint that is specifically designed to adhere to non-porous which would be multi-surface acrylic paints um, it would be glass or enamel paints porcelain paints all kinds of stuff like that so the key really is making sure that you check your paint bottles and look for the surface that you want to paint on in the description. Most paints will tell you very clearly what surfaces they are suitable for. Now I've got my phone raised up over my head you guys while I'm painting here so I'm, I can't see the comments right now so if you do leave a comment or a question please know that I will pause again in a little bit and come back and catch up on what I've missed um, but until then uh, a friend or two of mine might answer a question for you if you have any uh, but just know that I'm not ignoring you I promise I will come back and answer <clears throat> questions again in a little bit we don't have far to go, much left to complete on this one. So um, I'd actually like to power through and finish this off before I pause again. So um, I might just sit and talk randomly or I might end up falling silent here shortly. But we are so close to this piece being done. And by being done, I mean, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. By being done, I mean that the main design is done. Touch-ups, um, removing guidelines from the flat surface uh, will still need to be done. And varnishing will still need to be done. Um, and then resin once I make decisions about what brand. I'm hoping that I can use art resin because I have that on hand. So it would be nice to be able to do that. So... I'm just going to check and see what I can find out about durability and test it out a little bit. And hopefully that'll be durable enough because with these terracotta plates, I'm kind of, oh no, oh no, oh, I stuck my hand in paint and I've been tracking it. Crapola. Oh well, haven't been able to see it, so that's good. Or maybe you can. Am I off camera again? Crap. Oh well. Well, I just wiped off my hand so I shouldn't be tracking. I must have stuck this hand in paint. I think one of the things that I do is that I forget to do top to bottom for this stuff. And then uh, I end up sticking my hand in paint. Now, there is a big part of me that wants to dot over top of those smudges. Um, dot back over them with the base color and then redo them. Um, but a bigger part of me does not. So we're not. We are going to continue on because we are almost done. And that can be the Easter egg mistake in this piece. Say there's some kind of mistake in every single one. And I try to make it really hard to find. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so excited that this is almost done. 
It feels so, so good to be finishing off a project. So, so good. So once this is done, this is going to be going up for auction with um, the box, the teal box. It will be going up for auction. Not sure yet whether I'm going to do that auction on Facebook or Instagram, um, but I will keep you guys posted. I will announce the auction dates long, long, long before everything, long, long, long before it's going to take place. I have lots and lots of notice. But I have absolutely zero clue what I'm doing with that stuff. So we'll see what happens. It's going to take me a little bit. I have gone on to some art auction websites uh, and Facebook groups to kind of see how they run their auctions. So I've got some ideas, but I still don't feel steady on my feet for that yet. So a little more research, a little more learning and figuring things out and then we'll figure it out from there. Shit, I was out of camera, wasn't I? Crap. All right, let's try here. Stay here, Jamie. God, I'm so excited. One more section this size. Actually, we can let's just fill it all the way in. Oh, this is so exciting. It's almost done. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Look, look. That's it. The purple's done. <laughs> oh, that feels good. I love this project and it was fun, but it's taken a long time. And I am feeling so incredibly pleased that such a big project, or a project that sure feels really big anyway, is done. It feels really good. Between this and, and having such good days, oh my god. A lot of tiny penises in my town. A lot of really tiny penises. People ask me why I'm single, and I'm like, come sit and listen to Simcoe Street on a Friday night and listen to all the jacked up cars going by. That's why. That's why I'm single. Anyways, that was very judgmental and not as, not where I wanted to go with that, but it's the truth nonetheless. Anyways. It feels really, really good to have a couple different things to celebrate, right? There's always, there's shit going on, but those times where there feels like something worth celebrating, it's nice to be able to do so. But we got some people that need some love, and you guys are so good at giving some love. And I just want to thank you guys for always being so open and loving here. Here and on the Facebook group. You guys are just absolutely amazing. You're so welcoming and so kind. So anybody who is new to this page and to this little family of ours, just know that there are no expectations to come and hang out here. You don't need to be in any certain mood. You can just come here and be whatever you are feeling on that particular day. Everybody is welcome as long as you remain kind and respectful of anybody and everybody that's in here to the best of our ability. Of course, well, you know, maintaining boundaries for obvious reasons, but being kind and respectful to each other and just know that we will, we're happy you're here. Oh, it's done! It's done! <laughs> so excited. Okay. 
hold on, I'm trying to close my paint. And then we'll move this. <laughs> so excited. Look. It's done. Ah. Uh, I feel like that's a wicked picture right there. Ah. Uh -huh. All right, I'm going to scroll back. What's uh, what is the largest piece that I've ever done? I started a three foot square piece. Uh, never finished it. Oh, and look what I found the other day. I'm going to make more of these. I love these and I'm so happy with how this one turned out. I thought it got lost in the move, but it didn't. So I'm going to be making some more of these soon. I love them. They turned out wonderfully. Anyways, um, so I started a three foot square canvas. Um, I still have not finished it. The largest thing that I have completed was a 60 centimeter um, circle. Uh, round canvas. The painting is actually on my website if you want to take a look at it. It is the one that this was based off of, this design. Um, and it's so 60 centimeters would be what about 24, 22 inches maybe? Um, so the original canvas is there as well. Exactly, it makes it an original, exactly. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad you like it, Lori. Oh, Simcoe is uh, S-I-M-C-O-E, it's the street that I look on, look, overlook. Sorry, Jazzy Way, Jazzy Wazzy. Hi, Sharon. Yes, love to whoever need it. So many of us have come here to cry, okay, maybe just me. That's all right, that's okay. You come here and do what you need to do. That's the love here. Okay, I'm just scrolling back to catch up on the comments, so sorry. Aries, it's mine. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys like it. Thank you. I can't wait to get it finished. So a couple more weeks. Um, stay tuned, and I will definitely get that done. But I'm going to be doing a lot more of these, too. And at the time, I didn't like that the black was satin, but I think I really like that now. Anyways, we'll come back to that. Thank you, Terry. Thanks, Patty. Did you get the dots on the all green line on the side? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't gotten them all the way down. I kind of like the look of it though. Looks kind of random. I've thought about on one of them, I'm going to try to pull it down. I'm going to try to draw the lines to see if I can wrap the sides with it. We'll see how that works. Aw, oh, thank you, Christine. Thanks, Lori. Hi, Tammy. Thank you, Anna Marie. Best place when you need, need to be when you need to cry. Well, just to know that you are here to get, if you're here to get some love, I got lots of love to go around. There's lots of people here that have lots of love to go around. And we have all come here to get the love. And when we have the bandwidth to give the love away, we do so very freely here. So um, I just want you to all to know it's a, a safe place where you are welcome. Okay. What did I miss? Did I miss a comment? Did you get all the dots on the green line? Oh, is that what I missed? Did I miss something? I might have missed a couple, Lori. Hold on, I'll go around. Let's see if I missed anything. That's very possible. Sorry, Lori, I thought you meant on uh, on the heart. 
That one's really faint. Oop! Yeah, I need to get new thingies for the bottom. I think we're good. I think there's just a couple faint ones. But thank you. I, I, I don't know that I would have checked otherwise, so I appreciate that. Sorry about that, you guys. I didn't realize that's what you were saying. Oh, thank you, Arlene. All right. So, um, I'm going to just open the blinds really mm -hmm. quick because we're, I think, having a really pretty sunset. So I'm going to open the blinds for a second and then we'll do some more painting. I live on the eighth floor Hi. of an apartment building. And we have a pretty nice view. So I was, I, I was able to see some color. So let's see. Let's see what we got. Oh, it's pink over to the side. So let's see what we got. Let's see how it comes up on camera tonight. Looks kind of pretty though, eh? And then it's really pink over to the side. Like, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Ah. Oh, so nice. So nice to have the air coming in, too. All right. So what is next on the agenda? Um, why don't we just do a little recap first? Um on things that you guys may have been following along with. So, um, the resin keychains. I started using UV resin for the very first time. Have to put the 19 cats to bed. <laughs> we'll be here, Patty. Um, I started using UV resin. Um, I got J Diction brand, and it comes with a little UV light, and you pour the resin on, and less than 10 minutes later, I, this is a whole new world. So many of you have probably already used this, and if you have, I apologize, but I am absolutely gobsmacked by how how much friggin' fun this stuff is. So um, I have a bunch of keychains that I did the first side, so now I have to paint the other side. So let's have a look at some of these. Um, oh, this is the only one that I have completely finished. Um, these aren't available on my website yet, but they're going to be in another week or so. I'm still testing a lot of these. Um, I did not resin the sides. That's just a high gloss varnish. And to be brutally honest, I don't think I'm going to resin the sides because when I'm, I find that I'm, I'm a very tactile person and I like stuff like this for the feel of it in my hands. Number one, it's super smooth, which feels really, really good. I can't really pick at it and damage it, which feels really good. Um, but I really like the feel of the rougher wood with the smoother side. So um, these are going to be ones that I'm going to be making a lot more of, and I'm thinking I'm going to leave the sides blank. I might change some colors on them every once in a while. Uh, I might even put some dots there and maybe make them bumpy. That could be kind of cool to have some bumpy texture along there. But um, this is another color combo that I started with, very much like the Phoenix color combo. So these are all new pieces that I'm just kind of trying to get used to. Oh, I did have another one that was finished. Um, oh, I just haven't varnished it yet. So I've got this one on this side. And then that one, like so. Yeah, it, it looks nice just the way it is, doesn't it, Tammy? I think it looks really, really cool. So with some high gloss varnish on there, I think it, f and I just think it feels really, really cool. Um, we've got this one to do a rainbow on the other side. So we'll get that one done. So we've got all of these ones that have just a single side painted. So I've got to do some catch up. This one is uh, Jan's keychain. So we're going to do another design on this one. Um, and then I did some more with the flash stuff. Now this one, the resin spilled over the sides. You can see that there and you can see there's a big glom of that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try sanding this one and then putting some more 
um, UV resin on it to see if that helps. I've it that sort of procedure works with art resin, so I'm assuming it's going to work with this. And then we'll keep going. And then there's that one. So this is going to be taking up quite a bit of time over the next few lives working on keychains um, like this. The other thing that is going to take up quite a bit of time on our lives for the next couple of weeks is going to be finishing this plate. So this is going to be, so this is another terracotta plate, just like this one. Um, this one here needs to be varnished. Do you like the purples? I love it. It's been so fun to just try these little designs. Um, and then what I'm going to start to do is I'm actually going to create patterns out of these and have like a bundle of like 10 keychain patterns. And those could also be for Christmas ornaments and different things too, right? So different ways to come up with small patterns. I used to think that coming up with the small ones like this must be so easy. I have a much more difficult time coming up with a design that I like in these small ones compared to ones like a six inch to an eight inch size. This one's an eight inch. Um, the first time I did this design, I just did these two center rows. Um, so yeah, I find it much more complex and challenging to create a really nice design on the little pieces. Cause I find that when you're in the center like this and you're doing something so small, there's only so many different options or at least I've pigeon my, pigeonholed myself into some of those options and I need to kind of play around with it a little bit more. This was, I had never done one that was like this with the four main petals. I've always done ones that are at least, are at least six. So playing with different designs like this are gonna be fun. Playing with more spirals are gonna be fun. Um, I really wanna kind of push myself. So that's one thing to really remember is that just because it's small doesn't mean it's gonna be easier. Okay, so keep that in mind and be patient with yourself. Some days painting really small stuff is really fun. Other days, it is so absolutely maddening. So you really want to make sure that you um, stay in touch with how you're feeling about the project on that particular day before you jump in and force yourself to try to do some, try to force anything really, right? Thanks, Terry. You need a keychain. I'm so glad you like the taters. Thank you. Sounds good, Terry. We will be here. Yes, the smaller patterns for smaller rocks. Absolutely. It's it's so much fun. And I'm gonna I wanna start experimenting because I used to draw mandalas. Um so I used to these I did with some paint bottles. So starting to get back to things like this or things like this and just try and play with some of these different designs. Um, where's the one that I found the other day? I wanna get back to the paw print stuff, making keychains with the paw prints. Where's the stone that I found the other day, I wonder? I used to do drawn mandalas a lot, and I'm thinking that they would be really cool on this stuff too. So this, this is a just a wood keychain, and then I manufacture my own stones in these heart shapes. I've got round ones, I've got candle holders, I've made incense holders. So if you have an incense stick, the incense stick sticks right in the middle here. I've got about five or six of them available. I make them all with a plaster called gypsum plaster. Okay, so the gypsum plaster is softer than concrete, um, like softer than cement, but harder than plaster of Paris. When I started making my own stuff, I did start with plaster of Paris. It's a very inexpensive option. Um, but what happens is, is if it absorbs moisture, it can disintegrate. Um, the next thing I tried was quick crete, like quick cement. And it worked fantastic, but if you are shipping your items, they weigh a shit ton. <laughs> so this is kind of like the happy medium. You get some strength, but you don't get um, you don't get as much of the weight as with keychain. I don't have the keychains listed as of yet. These are a very, very new project. This is kind of a, 
a sneak peek to stuff stuff that's coming. This is going to be a good two, probably a good two weeks before I've got some keychains on my website. Um, oh, you like the paw print ones? I love these ones. I call them paw nuggets when I did the stones. And these ones are I have I have the keychains, but then I also have these ones that are just these little wood discs. And I kind of like the idea of having like a. Like, you know, if you want to have something in your, like a palm stone to carry with you or a worry stone to just kind of rub, um, I think that would be really cool. So the paw prints, I want to do more on the keychains and on these. So, um, yeah, there's there's an endless supply of things to paint on. You really can paint this stuff on absolutely anything. Um, and I, when you start painting this stuff... Um, We've all gone through, and if you haven't gone through this yet, you, and you're just starting painting dot mandalas, it's coming. Be ready for it. Everywhere you go, you're going to have, I, I could paint on that. Oh, a dot mandala would look on that. Oh, I want to paint on that. Oh, I should buy that because I could paint on it. Oh, I wonder if I could paint on that. It's constant. <laughs> uh, the plate is not for sale as of yet. It still needs to be resined. Um, it is going to go up for auction though. So let me show you the items that are going to go up for auction. Um, if these don't sell, they're going to go up for auction too. These are available on my website right now. These incense holders. So they might end up getting auctioned as well. But as of right now, this plate this plate when it's done when this plate is done I have the inner edge and the outer edge to do on this one as well as this box are going to go up for auction I'm going to do an auction either on my Facebook or my Instagram page I'm not sure which yet but I promise I will give a shit ton of notice before this auction is gonna take place. And it'll be a 24 hour auction for sure. Like you'll have 24 full hours to, to place bids and stuff. So um, so this box, it has hardware that has to go back on. I have to just finish varnishing it. And I'm gonna get some satin to put on the inside. And then uh, this will go up for auction as well. I've got one, two, I've got at least four, if not five more boxes of different sizes and different shapes to do in the future. So there's going to be a lot more boxes too. So please keep an eye. Um, it's going to be a few weeks away. It's not something that's coming up like in a couple of days. You've got some time um, and I need some time to figure all that stuff out and to put the finish touch finishing touches on that sort of stuff. Um, but what is going to come available in the next few days is, um, I'm going to have some, I unfortunately don't have any more of these blue mugs, but I am going to have some black mugs and some white mugs um, available for custom order with this color combo. This is the color combo that I'm going to do for this month. So um, again, keep your eyes open on here, on my Facebook, Instagram, and I will announce at least 24 hours in advance when the custom order slots are going to open up okay all right let me scroll back i know i missed some comments i'm so sorry let me let me scroll back yes worry stones right taters how do you determine your patterns aries so what i do is i honestly just wing it so the first thing that i did was I mastered the dots, right? I looked at a whole bunch, take inspiration from other artists, uh, jump on YouTube. I used to watch a lot of Lydia May and a lot of um, Elspeth McLean. Um, there's a whole bunch of YouTube artists that have been on this, um, uh, have been teaching this art form for a very, very long time. And they'll teach the elements. So the elements are really straight lines of dots, petals, petal shapes with these walking dots, swoops of any kind of cluster or arrangement and then just little clusters of dots to create these other shapes so the first thing that i would do is start creating just line after line after dots get used practice creating the same size dot create practice spacing but look for some patterns um, that you really like the look of and just start creating them i have gotten to the point now where 
I just wing it. Um, I've, sorry, I, I've kind of always just winged it. Um, and sometimes it works out really well and sometimes it works out horribly. So if you can kind of go into it being totally okay with experimentation and seeing where it goes, um, then just start trying stuff and see what you like and, and what you don't like. That's so you, Jessica. How you doing, love? It's good to see ya. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Oh, thank you so much, Barb. That's so sweet. Oh, and thank you, Tammy. Uh, Castaways, my website is mandalaloveaffair.com. Um, if you check out the link in my bio, I've got links there to my website where I've got all my hand-painted items that are ready to go. Um, I also have a YouTube channel where I have some free tutorials and a playlist and over 100 videos. Um, if you want to learn on my website as well, I have some downloadable step-by-step -step patterns for different designs. And um, also in that link, you will find the links to my Facebook group. I do have a Facebook group. And if you want to jump on there, you've got access to some great resources and um, some great advice and some amazing people as part of that community. So tons of different links in my bio if you have some interest there to spend some more time. Thanks, Cam. I'm so glad you like it. You're so in love. My brain is obsessed with patterns of bright colors, right? They're so happy and they're uplifting. They're just so uplifting. All right, I'm scrolling back. You're typing, okay, Sharon, no worries. Um, so green, so when I'm painting on a mug, I use multi-surface acrylic paints. Um, enamel paints and porcelain paints or glass paints will also work. What you're really looking for is a paint that will adhere or cure to a non-porous surface. Glass, um, some metals, ceramics are the big ones for non-porous. When I'm painting on wood or canvas, I will use regular acrylic paints. I do know a couple artists that use gouache as well, and I want to try that. Z Dot Designs, Zara in Australia, uses gouache, and, and I'm dying to try it. Uh, but I've only used the acrylics for now. I hope that helps, So Green. All right. So, what else is there for today? I'm trying to think, you guys. I think that's it for today. So what we can do though, is we can get started on another one of these keychains before signing off for tonight. How does that feel? Oh, I hate that when the ambulances are coming by. Thank you again, Jennifer, for the mug stands. Hey, got any, hey, got any guapes? Oh, sorry, it's going to be loud for a minute. Not driving very fast. Get going. Oh, thank you, So Green. That's so kind. Um, hey, got any grapes? If, if uh, Jennifer is still here, it makes the stand uh, available on her Etsy. And this is the stand that I use for painting my mugs now. This is so new to me, and it is so friggin' amazing. Yay! Jen, Jennifer's still here. Excellent. Working on the new concept now. Amazing. So you know how I had that stuff propped up so that I could turn the plate upside down and have something to rest it on? She's working on a stand for that, too, that would function in, a, in the same way to support the project. <clears throat> but this is the best thing that I've ever done. So if you want to, that I've ever done, um, it was the easiest is what I was trying to say. This was the easiest mug, especially the easiest wraparound design that I have ever done. I haven't done a wraparound design in a very, 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 very long time because they were <clears throat> significantly slower, which they do. They take a lot longer than a round design on the front of a mug. The wraparound designs just do take a lot more time, but um, this made it significantly easier. Significantly easier. So I still have, um, I need to be able to take photos um, of each step, so I can't work on this now uh, because I am creating a pattern for this as well. And the pattern will work on any, any mug. Um, any size mug. So um, that's another pattern that'll be coming out soon. Two. 
I'm loving it though. God, I keep just spinning around and looking at it. <laughs> I can't handle it. All right, I'm going to move that out of the way. And we will, let's see, which one do we want to do? Let's do, let's do, do, do. Let's do the purple, red, orange, and yellow. And we'll work on the other side of this keychain. So this one here is the same colors as in the Phoenix pattern. Frig, I love this. I, any excuse that I have to show this piece off, I'm going to take it. Um, I honestly don't know yet, Al Lover. These are brand new to me. I haven't even, I've only finished a couple. Um, so I have not gone through that process to figure out what the pricing is going to be yet. I need to make a few more before I can figure that out. I'm guessing that they will be uh, around $24, $25. Um, but I'm not 100% sure yet. So I'm going to... Do you like... Oh, isn't the Phoenix one amazing? Thank you, Ms. Ritzy. So that's the new pattern. That's the new downloadable pattern. It is available on the website right now. But keep an eye, Owl Lover. That is something that I want to figure out very, very soon. Um, so I would say expect to see some answers on that from me in the next two weeks. Um, because I do want to get a whole bunch of these done and um, get them ready to list there. So that stuff is definitely coming. Um, I'm just a little slow. <laughs> I'm just a little slow at getting it going right now. I'm still in the experimentation phase for it. Now, if I was my green ruler, I wonder where I would be. All right, so I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna get this ready and we'll paint another design. You're most welcome, Owl Lover. So I'm just burnishing the edge with this uh, pencil just so I can see the edge. Because it's a rounded one, I want to really see clearly where the edge of the flat surface is. So I'm just going like so. Now, what I'm going to do is I've got this circle stencil. I got this at... Michaels, it's an artist loft project uh, product. I believe that somebody said that Staples had it as well. Oh, excuse me, that was a big yawn that snuck up on me. Hi, Noreen, how are you? Hi, Dilo, thank you so much. How you doing, Noreen? What's new and exciting? How you been? Crystal, did I see you get in here too? All right. So we have a circle stencil. So what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of placing this on top here and checking to see. No. where I can put that. I want to say that that looks about right. So let's see. Nope, not even close. Okay. Um, that's because I'm being lazy and I'm trying to do this quickly and I, I know better. So let me... Staples as well as Amazon. Excellent. Thank you, Patty. That's very kind, taters. Britt, how you doing? Oh, I've been thinking about you lots, love. How you doing? And that's very kind of you, taters. Thank you. Lots of practice. Doing well, super busy, but life is good. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Thank you so much for that. It's so good to see you. How you doing, Britt? It's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. 
All right, so I'm going to do um, a way to find the center here that I find very easy. Um, so what the what the instructions were, there was a YouTube video that my friend Barb sent me. Can't do this because it moves. Um, and it said to find the center of any circle, what you first want to do is draw three lines of the same length. And these lines need to be easily divisible in half. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to line this up with the top of the keychain and I'm trying to do a two centimeter line like this and I'm marking the halfway. Can't see it, can you? There we go. I did some really big organizing. <laughs> yeah, it felt so good though. I, I've been going through these moments where I'm so stressed out by not knowing where my stuff is and it's because I've just completely dragged my heels I'm still not you know, completely unpacked from moving in with mom never mind the fact that I've got a whole storage unit 45 minutes away that's packed full of stuff too um I had no idea where any of my stuff was and I was getting so frustrated and I just I needed at least for the business side of things I needed to know what I had where everything was and see what kind of uh, ideas that brought up for me. But I was able to get rid of a garbage bag full of stuff. Uh, I had a whole, I have a whole bag of stuff to donate some, a whole a shit ton of paints and Christmas ornaments to take to the senior center. Um, so yeah, it felt really, really good. Okay. Sorry. So I'm going to go and I'm going to um, just draw two more two centimeter lines anywhere on this circle and then mark the half. And then what you do is you go back to these three lines and then you get to do a perpendicular line at the halfway point for each one. One, oops, one, and then this one, oops, two, I'm just going to do that one because this one I, I should have done another one like over here. Let's try this. This, the one that I did across the bottom was literally parallel to uh, the one I did across the top, so I want to get a different angle. Stop. Problem with a big thick ruler like this is it's snapping down on the on the little metal part at the top. <clears throat> it's frustrating. Okay, so we're gonna go back this way. Let's go here. Two. To one. Where? And then when you draw your lines, they should all intersect at the center. So having three is just like having a, a fail safe to make sure you found the center, which I have. So now I've got my one center line. Yes, this can feel complicated. I totally get it. This is not the way that you need to do it. It's just the way that I've found that has helped a lot. So now that I've got my center, I can draw my perpendicular line there. And then this is when I go in with the smaller circle just to give me my dot for my center dot. Just gives me a guideline for my center dot. Which I find can be very difficult to place actually properly centered. So having this line, this circle there helps me get that evened out. Super not dealing well for Brit Gray for me is a lot. Oh, Brit. I, I wish so badly that we could find a way to just give you a great big hug and, and give you a nice big collective hug. I wish there was a way to 
to do that and be there for you. So just know that even though I can't do that, and that always, it doesn't always help. It's not always what you want. Just know that the love is is flowing to you, okay, Britt? We're all sending you so much love. You needed a happy place to fall. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's anticipating fallout tomorrow, but I feel... Oh, love, I'm so sorry you're going through that. I'm so sorry. So I'm glad that you have found a soft place to fall here. That is everything I could ever ask for and dream of. Yeah. Yeah, you're stuck with us now, taters. Thanks, Noreen. I'm really, really happy with it. You saw the video? Yeah. It's crazy, eh? So I just go over this. So I use um, watercolor pencil crayons to draw my guidelines. Thanks, Jan. Jan got me completely hooked on watercolor pencil crayons because um, they can come off with uh, water and a cotton swab or an eraser or a combination of both. And, okay, so um, what, what I do is after I draw the guidelines, I just really lightly erase um, because there does, it does leave a waxy buildup, right? And if you try to dot over top of a line with a waxy buildup, let me show you what happens. So if I have this line like this, right? Let's grab a large tool. And let's grab, let me grab a nice bright color of paint. So I'm gonna dot over top of that line. And let's just hope it does what I say it's gonna do what I think it's gonna do. So see when I push down, see when I on the spots where it crosses, it pinches in a little bit. Let's do a smaller one. See how that's pinched in on the sides? It's almost straight on the sides. That's because of a waxy buildup. So if you are um, using a charcoal um, pencil, if you are finding that you are getting these little pinched in dots, that's why. Because whatever you're dotting over isn't, is getting in the way of the paint, okay? Yay. Aw, we love you, Britt. We love you guys. Thank you, Nikki. New here and love painting mandalas. What is the piece you're painting on? It looks like a rock. Is it a rock? No, this is a keychain, a wood keychain. So I'm painting double-sided designs on this wood keychain. Um, I'll paint on pretty much anything, though. <laughs> Britt, we're here if you need us, love. Um, I need gold too, don't I? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, gold is here. So we are going to start. You're most welcome. Most welcome. Definitely ask lots of questions. All right. So we're going to keep going for a little bit here. I know it's ten, almost 10 o'clock, but we'll uh, we'll stay on a little bit longer. Just adding some extra paint there. So see how it has that little dimple in the middle? If your paints are doing that, that it usually means that they're thick. Okay, but it's not the end of the world. If you go in, I always wet the tool first and go in with one of the nail dotting stylus tools and just start to push that paint towards the edge of the dot it will actually dome and round out and you won't have that little dimple, nipple, whatever you want to call it. He isn't a bad guy. We're just not compatible that way. I am age. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I went through that, Taters. It's hard. You're, you have to take care of yourself. Have to take care of yourself. K 
Kath. Are you coding with resin over the top of the keychains? Yes, I am. This is my first adventure into UV resin. And let me tell you, I am loving it. Loving it. Big time. Big, 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 big time. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go with orange. And we are going to actually go slightly larger. So we're going to go orange. These are significantly larger dots than I normally start with, but we're gonna do something different, because why not? The worst thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna try something different and we're not gonna like it, and we pull the paint off and start again. It's the worst thing that's gonna happen. You're welcome, Kath. Abilene, I hope that, did I pronounce that right? I'm so glad that you're enjoying it. That's wonderful. Better now with a couple of red flags. Oh, absolutely, taters. For sure. Doesn't make it easy, though, right? Even when you know it's right, doesn't make it easy. So just keep taking care of you. Proud of you. Hmm. Now let's go with. I did say it right. Yay! You're most welcome, Taters. I'm so glad. So glad you're here. thinking now. Hmm. Let me do it on that side. The reason I sometimes do the every other is because it helps me with spacing. <clears throat> when you are placing a dot like I am right now, my only points of reference are the two orange from the row before. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, whereas now when I go to place this dot, this yellow dot in the middle, I now not only have the two orange dots as reference, but I also have the two yellow dots as reference. So I can focus on just placing this dot halfway between the two yellow dots. And if there are any spacing issues from the orange row, it'll kind of work those out. My dogs just fought now. Oh no, I'm so sorry, Christine. Oh no, damn. Sending you lots of love. I hope everybody's okay. Oh, so sorry, love. All right. So now let's... What are we going to do now? I'm thinking, I'm thinking... All right, we're gonna go with purple. Mm -mm. Yeah, no kidding, eh, Christine? Mm, I'm so sorry, I hope everybody's okay. Thank you, Speed Demon. This is a Dot Mandela keychain that I'm making and it's actually my full-time career
All right, so now let's keep going. But I love teaching people how to do it. So if it's something that interests you and you want to learn, um, I have a YouTube channel. And I have, um, that's way too big. No, it's not. We're going to have fun with this. Um, I have a YouTube channel where I've got some tutorials and I've also got some downloadable patterns uh, on my website as well. So if you want to learn how to do this, then there's some good options there for you. Now. I'm going to go with red and I'm going to go down. I'm going to stay on for a few more minutes, you guys, and then we're going to, we'll call it a night. Right? It's all winging it, all waiting to see what we like, what we don't like, and how we want to proceed. So, for right now, oh, I try to be. Oh, oh, Christine. Oh, no. Thank you, Nikki. Oh, Christine. Oh, God. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, Abelene, yes, I do. I have um, some of my hand-painted items, a bunch of mugs and some incense holders and candle holders and stuff all on there. Sending you so, so much love, Christine. All your th they're, you're all passed out on the couch and watching. That's awesome. This is my full-time job, Speed Demon. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really fun. It's a lot of fun. It's very therapeutic. Very, very therapeutic. So painting this stuff and teaching people how to do it is, yeah, that's my thing. Feeling more calm than in weeks. Yay, wonderful taters. That's amazing. Um, Nikki, I'm using dotting tools from a company called DIY Mandala Stones. They come in a set with a whole bunch of different sizes. So larger, sneeze. <coughs> larger and smart on smaller ones. And, um, so I've got ones that go from, there's the size range and they're all double ended. Um, I also use nail dotting stylus tools. These are the ones that have the little metal balls on the end. Uh, clay sculpture tools is also what they can be called. Um, and they're fantastic. Aw, oh, thank you, Speed Demon. That's so kind. Yeah, it's very meditative, right? Calms my mind, calms my breathing. Calms everything. Now, I wasn't supposed to use that red. That's the wrong red. It's not the same red that's on the other side. I grabbed the wrong one. Well, we'll see what happens. Thank you, Ms. Ritzy. Jump into it, taters. Have so much fun. Yeah, there's a lot of fun ones. A lot of fun tools out there. All right, so I'm going to show you the swoops that I'm going to do, and I'm going to build this design out as, as we go. But I'm going to do some swoops, and then this is what...
Yeah, this is that metallic red that we didn't really like too much. That's all right. I'm going to add gold detail in here as well. Uh, but we're not going to get to that tonight. I'm just going to finish these and then we will, I'll show you what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep adding in more of these swoops. So we're going to layer on orange. And then once we add in the gold, that'll finish it. But I'll show you quickly how this is going to look because these are quick to get through. So let's go to the orange. So in between the orange and the yellow that are in the center, I'm going to um, I'm going to add some gold dots in between. But for now, we just want to do these swoops. When it comes to doing these swoops, remember that slower is better. If you are trying to do these drag swoops and they're not turning out the way that you want them to, slow down. painting with a nail dotting stylus tool so they come in sets that usually have the little metal balls on the end also called clay sculpture tools and this one is just the straight tool of the set so I think I'm gonna have to go over the reds with the original red that I wanted to use because this metallic red is really screwing with me. So I'm going to choose the proper red to do the red swoops. And then after those dots dry, I'm going to go over them with, with the other red because it's uh, this, it's not that I don't like it. It's just, it's not going to match what's on the back. And the whole idea is to create that matching set. So, now, let's do, which one? Which one, which one? Thank you so much. So I'm gonna have to wait on some of those because they need to be, I think they need to dry. So I'm gonna have to come back to this and I'm gonna have to finish it um, tomorrow once it's dried. But let me show you, let me at least get the gold detail in the middle. This is gonna look so different when you see it when it's done. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely going to go over those reds and it'll be fixed up tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another swoop that's going to come down through the center here. Um, I'm going to do um, 
a couple actually. So I want to wait for the orange and the yellow to dry before I do that. Because if I don't, when I go to pull the tool over top of those half dry paints, it's gonna get all gummy and it's gonna start to pull up. So if I can do it this way, where I can um, wait for it to dry, then I will um, reduce the risk of smudging and pulling up some gummy paints. So um, I am going to sign off. It's, it is time for me to go through my nighttime routine and get ready to go to bed soon. Um, but thank you guys so much for a great live. This has been a lot of fun. It felt so good to get a project done and it was so nice to meet so many new faces, faces, names, faces, not faces, but hi. <laughs> it's so nice to meet so many new people. And of course, um, it's so nice to see so many, um, so many friends. I have posted my live schedule for the rest of the week. If you want to check, it's one of the two pinned posts uh, in my profile. Um, all of my links are in my bio for my Facebook group, my YouTube channel, my website, everything that you can think of. And um, I'll look forward to seeing you again soon, hopefully. Uh, let me just check and make sure that I haven't um, missed any comments. Hi, Carolyn. How you doing, love? Krista, yes, absolutely. You can paint this on absolutely anything you want. Uh, Think and Thrive, yes, I'm using acrylic paints. Absolutely. Now, Krista, when you do paint on tile, if they are glazed tile, like ceramic tile, you're going to want to use multi-surface acrylic paints, glass, or enamel paints because glazed tile is not a porous surface, meaning wood and stone is porous, so it kind of soaks up some of the paint, it grabs onto it, it's got some tooth. Non-porous surfaces are very slick and very difficult to adhere to. So you wanna make sure you get multi-surface glass or enamel paints for painting on tiles. Uh, so I'm using regular acrylics for, for these, and I also use multi-surface acrylic paints for mugs and everything else. Oh, I'm so glad, Terry. That makes me so happy. I'm so glad that you're here. And Taters, it was so wonderful to, to have you guys here. Chris, thank you so much. How you doing, friend? Uh, the keychains are not on my website as of yet. Um, couple Two couple weeks until they uh, get released. They are a very, very, very new thing to me. So we're still just playing around. Still just playing around and having some fun with them. But we've uh, we've done some fun ones so far. So we're getting there. Still lots to play around with, though. So I hate to jump off, you guys, um, but I do need to um, to head out. We're, we've run over by about 20 minutes, but thank you for coming and hanging out with me. If you guys have any questions at all, please let me know. Like I said, all of my links are in my bio. Chris, I'm glad that you're doing well. That's so good. Um, the keychains um, are uh, one and a half, my love. Um, so definitely stay tuned. I will give you guys tons of notice when um, the keychains go live. I will give you tons of notice when the custom order mu uh, mug order slots open. I will give you tons of notice before we put the plate, the box, not my chips, the chips stay, or this other plate. Once these are ready to go up for auction, I will post a crap ton about it and give you guys tons and tons of notice. So um, until then, we're going to keep working on these keychains for the lives for the rest of the week. And hopefully I'll get to hang out with you again really soon. I have been busy. <laughs> it's felt really good to be productive, though. This is this is the energy I want to I want to ride on for a little while. So we'll see how it goes. But thank you guys so much for all of the love. Thank you for hanging out with me and choosing to spend your spare time with me. It means the world to me. And uh, you know where to find me if there's anything I can do to help you uh, start this adventure or along your adventure on here. I love you guys. And I will see you again very, very soon. Please take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.